I'm delighted to be uh, talking this morning again. It's a one-year anniversary. We, we did this talk a year ago at ASU GSB 2022 um, with a woman who is very passionate about education, so we'll, we'll kind of get right to it. So, um, Divya, since we last sat on the stage, um, the last 12 months, as I, I think I characterized it for you, could be sort of characterized by Charles Dickens' Tale of Two Cities. Uh, it's been the best of times and it's been um, the worst of times. And I wanna, wanna dive into that a little bit. Um, let's start with some of the highlights. In March of last year, right before ASU GSV, Baijus announced that you would become the official sponsor of the FIFA World Cup. And then in November, in a, um, what was a very bold move, I thought, you announced the Soccer World Superstar, Lionel Messi would become the first global brand ambassador for your social impact arm that Chris referenced, Education for All. While not without some controversy because it was, its timing was relative to, to some company layoffs, the Messi alignment became even more extraordinary when, as we all know, um, it went on to Argentina defeated France and Messi got his first World Cup, which was remarkable, and he was named man of the match. So I'd, like to, I'd love to hear um, how Baiju benefited from the extraordinary global um, brand exposure. I am not a soccer nut, but I watched everything, and you're, you know, I, I saw Baiju every, you know, every five seconds. Um, was it high ROI, and how did it drive your business? You know, all that sort of thing, and I'd love to hear kind of the role that Lionel's playing in, um, or Messi's playing in, your, um, in, in rolling out your initiatives. 15 minutes won't be enough yeah. to answer that question. But by starting, I can say the last 12 months, it's more the best of times than the worst of times. In fact, uh, perceivably, and I think that's because negativity travels more than positivity. And I think it's a good thing because everyone's gonna be surprised in some time when they see how we've come out of a relatively tough macro environment and done a lot of things. For example, in the last one year, which is presumably the toughest, we've launched 300 hybrid learning centers. We pioneered in hybrid learning, which was the need of the hour. In the last 12 to 15 months, all our acquisitions, well, I'll say most of our acquisitions are doing phenomenally well, cash flow positive, are growing three times. Akash, one of your favorite companies. Yep. Uh, then we have Epic, Tinker, Osmo has also grown in the last 12 months, doing very, very well. Even though we've cut down our marketing costs in our move towards profitability over the last one year, We've seen increase in uh, organic growth among our users. So it's doing even better than ever before. Baiju's Labs, which is our innovation labs across the world, has come up with some fantastic work uh, leveraging the latest large language models, which I'll give a sneak peek into towards the end of the session time permitting. And education for all, which is something that we are so proud of in the last two years, has impacted 5.5 million children, half of them girls, from the deepest parts of the country. And the social return on investment as audited by KPMG is two is to one, which means for every dollar that we invest, it's giving two dollars of social impact. So yes, we are an elephant with wings, purple wings, <laughs> flying in the right direction. Yep. Sure, we are heavy, we are big, but we are continuously innovating, we are continuously moving. It's still day one for us. And uh, coming to the Messi question, uh, well, it's, I would like to say that we chose Messi as he did choose us. So we're very privileged and honored to be partnering with uh, one of the greatest global sportsmen in history, someone who resonates deeply with the, with the cause of sport and the cause of education, both of which are critical for a child's all-round development. So, I mean, uh, I would say it worked out very well for both of us, both Baijus and Messi, that he did so well. And in his own words, and I think it's so relevant to us, uh, it took him 17 years, 114 hours, day after day, night after night, to become an overnight success. That's the how, same for Baijus. We've not come out of nowhere or somewhere. We've been there for the last 15 years. We're going to be here for the next 30 years at least, doing whatever we're doing today better than ever before. Fantastic. Told you, I told you she had passion. It's true. And, FIFA, and the FIFA sponsorship overall, how did that, you know, in, in terms of your marketing and eyeballs, and how, how, how did you all benefit from that? So I saw the numbers. It said that 5 billion people were exposed to the FIFA World Cup. That's two-thirds of humanity. And you said you saw us every five seconds. It was amazing. So we know the numbers. It's done phenomenally well for us. 
And we've always seen that the way to go, especially in education, is to have strong top of mind recall and talk about the value you offer. Valuations can come and go. Values are forever. Very, very, very true. Um, so it, there have been days in the last, let me switch a little bit on, onto the business. There have been days in the last year where, um, and I follow, because I've spent so much time in India, I follow the Indian media very closely. Uh, and I've, there have been days that I've sort of wondered how Indian media could survive without a Baiju story. And um, they certainly love to, uh, love to, love to print it. Um, you, you and Baiju have actually been very public um, about the, um, using, and you've used the media to be very public about mistakes you might have made in the, you know, sort of the rapid growth period of Baiju, um, and you know, and how how you all have thought about that. I'd love to hear, you know, and, and I'd love to hear your take on how, you know, how you developed resilience, how you learned to deal with, you know, adversity of sort of that kind of coverage. And, you know, frankly, how, you know, how thick does your skin have to be? So I want to start by saying that we are pioneers in tech, not pioneers in perfection. And especially for tech, we've been painting an empty canvas. Sure, we went over the lines at some times, but I think it's important that we corrected ourselves. It happens to every company as you grow. And mistakes need to be celebrated as long as you learn from it. And I want to believe that we did because we are learners every day. Yes, Baiju and I started as teachers, but today the core of us is that we are learners, like our 150 million students are across the world. And that's what's working for us. Also, nothing is as good as what you read, disclaimer, nothing is as bad as what you read. Life is in the middle. And that's how it is, and that's what keeps us going. We are doing whatever we are doing for the 150 million kids and working professionals. We're doing whatever we are doing for our 55,000 employees across the world. So it's not about having a thick skin. It's about having a strong core. And you certainly weren't alone um, in, in taking layoffs in this last year. It is something that pretty much every company, and frankly, the tech sector, forget ed tech, had to face. How difficult was that for you all? How, you know, how have you thought about that? How in your execution of um, things like that in hindsight, how is that? How has that impacted your culture, all that sort of thing? I should be frank that it was one of the most difficult things for us to do. And we never thought that we, there would come a day where we had to let go of 5% of our precious team. But it had to be done because we had so many acquisitions over the last three years that there was duplicacy of roles. Different companies lay off for different reasons. For us, it was because of role redundancy and because while acquiring, we never really consolidated. We did a consolidation only late last year, where we brought together all the teams of all our companies and integrated our strengths. So it was a required move towards our movement uh, to profitability. It was one of the three. We also increased operational efficiencies. We reduced our marketing spends. So this was a three-pronged approach. But in the same period, we've also hired 25,000 people. But nobody knows about that. So yes, we had to unfortunately let go 5% of our team, but we also added 25,000 people to our workforce. And you continue to be one of the largest employers in India. Correct? We are one of the top employers in India in the private segment. We are, the, we are India's largest hirer of teachers. We have 25,000 teachers, mostly women, teaching from home to the rest of the world. Great. I'm not sure if you've heard anything about this chat GBT thing. <laughs> I've been only hearing that for the last two days. Yeah, we've had a, we've had a little discussion about it here at the, uh, the ASU GSV Summit. It's been sort of a topic that's come up. Um, you referenced it a little bit in your, in your um, first, first statement. Uh, love to hear you know, how Baiju sees implementing um, generative AI and is part of your strategy. You know, how does it impact the various parts of your business? Um, and whether you think Indian companies will be leaders or lack, or or, le or wait and see how the early adopters go before they jump in. So, you know, kind of love to hear about that. Well, I want to say that the time for EdTech is now, the time for India is now. And so many indicators show us that we cannot stay behind. Even if we want to, we can't, because the numbers are all pushing us towards continuous innovation and and betterment and development. And we all know the statistics. The Bloomberg recession report said the only country which has a 0% chance of recession is India. 
the IMF said the country which is growing the fastest is India. And Indian edtech is growing at 40%. Global edtech is growing at 16.5%. Some people asked me about the edtech bubble. I said, edtech is education. Can you ever have a bubble in learning and education? You cannot. Sure. It's just that people don't understand what edtech is doing. It's, it's improving education. It's enabling education. So yes, we have been on, on top of uh, all the new language models which have been developed. And today, for the first time, I actually put together, my team has put together, my Baiju's Labs has put together a sneak peek of what we're doing, a very small uh, note on what we're doing for uh, you know, generative AI. If I could have the team, please pull that up. And I'll just give a, a voiceover as it plays. Now that we have great music. So there are three loops. The outer is what we see on the app. The middle is personalization. The inner is hyper-personalization. I'm going to explain this further. We have a point teach bottom out technique where we guide the child towards the answer using large language models. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen, there's going to be a hint which pops up, which is powered by GPT-4. And um, as the student doesn't get the answer, they first give a pointed hint which just creatively explains what the answer could be to the child. If he or she doesn't get it, they start teaching a little deeper, give a knowledge component, finally give an analogy, in this case give the formula, and finally what is bottom out is give the exact steps that the student needs to follow. All of this is done by tech, but trained by our Baiju Lab. Now, the second one which I'm going to talk to you is about is how problem solving is happening using large language models. So as you can see over here, this applet is one of one of our subsidiaries, GeoGebra, a very visual way to solve math questions. And you would see, uh, you know, the applet, there's a question out there which is thrown out completely on its own uh, based on how we train it. There's an equation getting solved on the side. Just to be clear, we all learned in the last two days, GPT-4 cannot do math. Baiju's does math. So our internal models do the math. We just tell uh, the language model, hey, come to us. We have the solution. Just go present it in a nice way. That's what we do. And the three loops that you see over there, uh, that's what is actually delivering a very, very hyper-personalized, with guardrail, uh, technology-safe uh, product to students out in an app near you very soon. Fantastic. And that'll be all country, all countries available in all? All countries. Fantastic. All right, for my, my last question, you're, you're, you and Baiju are a powerhouse couple, and you undoubtedly have a powerhouse marriage. Um, how, is it, you know, how do you hold it together under, sort of, under stressful, the stressful last year? What's the secret? No time. <laughs> I, won't, I won't push you any further on that answer. <laughs> uh, that's great. So company's good is the message. How about the, finan the rumored financing? How is that? How is that? You know, there've been certainly lots of lots of stories about that about Baju raising capital. How's that coming? I'll give you some good news very soon. Okay, excellent. That would be great. You heard that here. Good news soon. Well, with that I um, it was fantastic to have you back, and um, we wish you the you know, the absolute very best, and um, can't wait to see the uh, the AI app coming out on the on the on the Baju's platform. So. Everybody, big round of applause for Divya and her passion for education. Thank you. Thank you for being such a wonderful audience. Thank you, Deborah.